In today's video, we'll be taking a look back at one of the greatest RPGs of all time. I'll be deep diving into the gameplay, having a spoiler-free as possible discussion about the story and characters, as well as comparing some of the differences between Xenoblade Chronicles versus the Definitive Edition. I'm Anthony from the Beta Network, and with today's game, I'm sure you're all familiar with main protagonist Shulk, since he's appeared in the last two Super Smash Bros. entries. But if you're curious as to why the game he features in is so special, and what the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is adding in, stick around, and I'll get you up to speed. This story follows Shulk and his friends as they try and unlock the secrets of the mystical Monado, Shulk's iconic red blade, whilst embarking on a journey to face off against an extremely wicked villain known as Metal Face. You can probably figure out why they call him that. Oh really, you don't say? But in all seriousness, some of the major topics explored in detail include the theme of revenge, how it can blind its host and push them down a dark, single-minded path, the inevitability of destiny, are we powerless to stop forces beyond our control, and the themes of inner strength and servitude. Once a situation slips from our fingers, where does one muster the solidity and wisdom to move forward? The characters and story in Xenoblade Chronicles occasionally fall into certain tropes a little, but don't get me wrong, there's a lot to love here, and an overwhelming majority of the cast really do stand out in their own unique way. Shulk is a researcher and quite the intellectual, usually being a few steps ahead of everyone else. And I don't just mean in his visions, which I'll get into in a bit, but he has this fascination for learning new information and often gets so caught up in his studies that he unknowingly neglects those around him. But when push does come to shove, he really can show a wide range of emotions that proves his friend's safety are of the highest priority. His best friend Ryan, however, known for his famous line, Now it's Ryan time! is on another end of the spectrum. He makes some not so smart decisions at times and definitely isn't the most conscious of what he's doing to others, but his actions are never from a place of malice. Combine this with his loyalty to Shulk and an overall goofy yet serious demeanor and it makes the character all the more endearing. Speaking of endearing, look at this guy. You'll love him as soon as you see him. Why is he so sad? And why does he have money problems? That's actually hilarious. Can it get any better, folks? If you're liking this Xenoblade video so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button, as well as a bell icon next to it, and press all. This will keep you up to date on all of our latest videos. I'll give you a couple seconds. Okay, thanks for your help, guys. I really appreciate it. What helps heighten the affection for the cast even further is this game's voiceover. Xenoblade Chronicles is lauded for its unique and dramatic acting, and deservedly so. There's one moment in particular that I remember quite fondly, where you can really hear the strain from Shulk's voice actor as he screams out in agony over something I won't dare reveal. I get chills every time I watch this scene. A huge props to voice actor Adam Howden for that Oscar-worthy performance. Let me know in the comments if you felt that heat. Whew. The voice acting in this series is also quite distinct, in the fact that the entire cast hails from Britain. Nintendo of America wasn't keen on releasing Xenoblade Chronicles in the States at all, due to low sales projections. But Nintendo UK stepped in and went about hiring local TV and stage show talent, which also helped lend this RPG its own unique flavour. Nintendo of America saw how much of an impact the original was having in Europe, so they promptly made plans for a US release. British voices intact. They even carried over that UK centred voice acting for the sequel. Xenoblade Chronicles takes a page out of Final Fantasy XII's active dimension battle system where you'd wait for a specific length of time to trigger a command, but each combatant would be moving in real time rather than pausing the action like previous entries in the Final Fantasy series. This gameplay formula from Square Enix was well lauded back in 2006, and it seems Monolith Soft wanted to expand upon this approach even further. The party member you're controlling will auto-attack when in range of enemies, utilizing a set of eight arts in battle. The crux of this game is that depending on where your characters are positioned, will substantially alter the effect and devastation of said arts. 
For example, Shulk's Backslash does additional damage when behind an opponent, so you'll need to divert the enemy's attention, or aggro as the game calls it, away from him for maximum damage output. As Shulk's moveset is largely dependent on rear and side slashes, as well as the fact that he can't take much of a beating either, it's imperative to keep him out of harm's way. Each character has their own specific class they fall into. Though never outright stated, finding a good balance of healer, tank, and an all-round party member almost always yields fruitful results. You only play as a party leader in combat, with limited controls of the others in terms of AI behavior and command inputs, but they actually put up a decent fight and react accordingly to specific scenarios when required. Speaking of scenarios, there's a mechanic called Topple, which can be triggered by certain arts after an enemy is in break status. Being toppled temporarily removes the receiver's ability to evade, so each strike will be 100% accurate, critical base damage bumps up to 25%, and either attacks will always deal critical hits. The more topple arts used when an enemy is in that state will increase its time length, and when toppled, the recipient is vulnerable to day status, which has its own set of benefits. This would be an excellent time to discuss the real hook of this game, Shulk's famous red blade, the Monado. Not only being the main focal point of the plot, but in terms of gameplay, there's a ton of functionality that can really spice up the party dynamic and turn the tide in your favour. The Monado grants Shulk several distinct advantages in battle, although the real trump card is in the perceived visions of foresight. If Shulk's in your party when an enemy's about to unleash a powerful or significant art, gameplay will halt whilst displaying who the target is and what the outcome will be if the attack lands. You then have several options to circumvent the vision, depending on which type of art the enemy is preparing. For instance, a physical art displayed in red text prompts the character to avoid the attack. In battle, I'd often use Shulk's Monado Speed to momentarily raise the locked-on character's evasion to great effect. This game has a limit break system called Chain Attack that stops combat and replenishes your art, allowing your team to input a different art for each character up to 15 times. There's also a combat multiplier for extra damage included, and can even break through an enemy's status buff. A certain opponent's resistance to topple may be exceedingly high, for instance, and a chain attack could possibly pierce through it. The amount of moves allowed is dependent on the affinity between characters, and it does deplete the whole party gauge though, meaning you won't be able to revive a fallen comrade for a short time, so carefully consider the ideal moment to execute this trump card, as it can easily turn into a glass cannon. Hyper fast. I'm sure you've all been listening to the background music and going, damn, those are some epic tunes. And you're absolutely correct. <laughs> the level of musical mastery on display here is palpable, and it makes sense coming from some of the biggest names in the gaming industry. There's a total of six artists credited with composing the music for Xenoblade Chronicles, with two megastars in Yatsunori Mitsuda of Chrono Trigger fame and Yoko Shimamura of Kingdom Hearts Renown. The compositions these guys write for the game are incredible, and their sound is instantly recognisable, but they only contribute a handful of the tunes on record. The real bulk of the soundtrack comes from Manami Kyota and musical trio Ace Plus. These guys really outdid themselves with smash hits featured in Smash Bros like Gower Plane and You Will Know Our Names, and one of my personal favourites, the Eris C Night Track. I can't reiterate how well done this soundtrack is, Every piece of music fits the scene and emotional core of this game perfectly. Now onto the variance between the two versions. The main big difference is obviously the graphics, which now have a saturated, cell shaded look without the dull, flat textures of the original. The definitive addition is evidently infusing the characters with more vibrant animation and zest. The menus and in-game overlays have had an entire makeover too, with easier to read text and less clutter overall. Although I must say I do prefer the original battle portraits. That being said, I think the updated ones will grow on me with time. The music too has been given a facelift in a redone soundtrack, when Nintendo announced just recently that you could switch between the original and a Rage versions on a whim. From the examples I've heard, the music adds some extra counter melodies in and sounds a lot fuller and dynamic. Some of the tunes in the original did seem a touch compressed. They're still amazing though, don't get me wrong. The big draw card for seasoned fans is the inclusion of the epilogue, Future Connected, 
where Shulk, Malia, and two unnamed Nopon explore New Horizons. We're not exactly sure what they're doing, but a few rumors are circling around that it's actually cut content from the original. The awesome part is that Future Connected is available right out the gate, so if you've played this game before, you don't have to journey all the way through its 50 plus hour story. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments, and how hyped you are for the new version. If you're really feeling it, throw us a like too! I honestly can't wait to pick up the definitive edition! This has been Anthony from the Beta Network, signing out.